Hey guys, how are you? A little early this morning. I mean, this evening, but it's cool. So we could hang. Say real. <laughs> how are you? Hey, Tamisha, how are you? How are you? I thought we could just hang out a little bit before we we got to jump in. I'm really excited about tonight. Get your pen and your paper. <clears throat> Get your pen and your paper. Hey, Alice, I see you. <laughs> Some jet, oh yeah. Look at that Holy Spirit. <laughs> hey. <laughs> I love you, sister. I love you. How are you guys doing? I pray you guys are ready for tonight. Get your pen, your paper, and your Bible. Hey, Chandra in the building. Oh my God, I know, right? I'm so excited. I'm so excited. This is our last December of the decade. Our last December of the decade, guys. Like, that's deep. That's deep. It's been a long decade. It's been a long decade. It's been a long decade. It's the last December of the decade. I'm telling you, I'm so excited. This is a good word tonight. Um, I'm excited about it. Um, get your pen, your paper, and your Bible. Um, let me know when you're ready. We can just get started a little bit early. Is that okay? <clears throat> I pray that you guys feel the... Um, good, good, Tamisha. I pray that you guys feel the... Um, I got kind of a new setup, so I try to read the comments. If that's what you're like, Anise, what are you doing? Hey, India, how are you? Sister, hey, Claude Nenise, how are you? Maisha, Felicia. Chandra's laughing at me, Tanja. So, you know, before everybody gets on, it's just us, we're family. What is the, your biggest takeaway from 20, from 2000s, 2010 to 2020? What's your biggest takeaway? What's your biggest takeaway? Take just like three people answer it. What's your biggest takeaway? What are you taking out of this decade? What are you taking out of this decade with you? Not everybody all at once. I know everybody's like, I got a ton of things. <laughs> right? It's, it's, this has been one heck of a 10 year stint. And so, I don't know, somebody type in, what are you taking out of this decade? I'm stronger than I thought. Yeah, yeah, for many of us, this decade made us. <laughs> right, right? What else? Stronger than, I love that, stronger than I thought. So that means you're going into the next decade, like, not afraid. You know what I mean? Because you, if you're stronger than what you thought, then you're stronger than what you think. It's a principle, right? So if I'm stronger than what I thought, I'm still stronger than what I think. So I still don't really understand what I'm really made of. Interesting. That's good. Somebody else, one more person. And then we're going to get into it. We're going to be in um, <clears throat> Numbers chapter 27. Numbers chapter 27. Y'all are awfully quiet. Somebody else, what is um, a takeaway you're taking from um, this decade? This is the last December of the decade the last December of the decade. Oh, you guys are like, Anise, scroll down. Um, growth will always look like hardship until, <laughs> hey, that'll preach. Don't limit God, that'll preach. To trust God and lean not to my own understanding, God is blowing my mind when I rely on his strength. That's good. God is a glass ceiling, breaking God. Okay, okay. Um, uh, go a little bit deeper into that, Maisha. <clears throat> That's good though, I know where you're going with that, right? Um, one of the hardest things to do, Claude Anise, is to just kind of chillax with God, right? That's one of the hardest things sometimes. Um, we labor to get into that rest. We labor. That's our real labor is to sit rest and to let the Father, you know, do the driving, so to speak. Deneen said to be intentional. That's good. That's good. You know, certainly when you experience loss, um, not just loss like in death, but loss with um, people. You know, if you were divorced in this decade, 
<laughs> if you were divorced, if, you know, kids grew up, you know, a lot of, you know, kids 10, now they 20, you know, um, being intentional is huge because you understand like time is, how are we spending it? Is it well spent or, you know, do we have any regrets? So prayerfully, you guys, we will be doing some reflection over um, 2020. I mean, yeah, as we go into 2020, we'll be doing some reflection about where we've been and where we're going so that history won't repeat itself. Hey, Ava, how are you? How are you? Right. We don't want history to repeat our repeat itself. We want um, we want the history of God, but we don't want our history kind of going in circles. Right. Right. So we're going to be is it seven? Is it seven? It is 658. So we're going to be in uh, Numbers chapter 27. This is good. This is real good. So I had a dream and out of this has come a prophetic word. And so when I had the dream um, overnight, um, we're going into our fast tomorrow for the wall. We're going into three days as close as you can to nothing, even though we're, uh, yes, we're on a consecration. Howsomever, we're in the last month of the consecration, right? But we are, um, we are really um, honing in on resources and honing in on uh, cycles, uh, restoring the prophetic cycles, restoring the prophetic lineage that is uh, to be part of your lineage. God told me to quit my job and go back to school. Never done my pillars. Hey, you did something courageous. Come on here. I'm almost in the same position. We have to up and leave and head to Chicago. Amen. 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 Hey, Shonda, how are you? So if you just joined, we're going to be in Numbers chapter 27. I need you to get your pen, your paper, and your Bible. There's going to be a level of deliverance that happens today. Is that okay? Is that okay if we do a level of deliverance? You know, sometimes the word uh, is, is the, the word is a deliverance tool in itself. And then the love of God is a deliverance tool in itself too. So uh, as I was saying, the fast, the three-day fast starts tomorrow. It starts tomorrow. I admonish um, all of us, even if we've done the fast already, to do it again because God is speaking and he is pouring out plans and details and instructions just like that, just like that. And so we want to remove anything that would be war against him and war against heaven as he is, um, hey, Kia, as he is pouring out the new um, for this season, right? So we're going to be in Numbers chapter 27. Let me know when you get there. Um, and we're just going to hop right in because this is going to be good tonight. Okay. All right. So I had this dream. I pray y'all are ready. Um, I had this dream and I know that we're getting ready to start the fast. And so before I even, um, um, you know, was even really getting ready to pray into the dream was pretty straightforward and to pray into the prophetic word of the dream. I wanted to know how this was going to reconcile with the fast that we are embarking on over the next three days. And so a lot of times the way the, the Lord works with me is because I'm so word oriented. If I'm going to give you a prophetic word, because I, I roll heavy with a word of wisdom and that's, that's based out of the word. That's a word that is based out of the word or on the word, right? And so it's easy for me to take a prophetic word and wrap it in a word of wisdom using the scripture. That's just, that's just kind of how I work. And so I want to make sure that before we release anything or before, you know, um, we, how it, how it reconciles for me, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of the Lord. And so how I reconcile what I'm hearing and a filter for me, this is just good old fashioned teaching um, or training or equipping is it does this measure up with, and is this the word of the Lord in terms of the character of God? What God speaks is not going to go against his character and his character is most plainly seen in the scripture. Right. I know God in the most plainest way in the scripture. It is straightforward. It is basically straightforward. Right. So if you're struggling with is this God, is it not God, is this God, is it not God? When you look at the pattern of the scripture, is it in line with the pattern of his nature? He's the same yesterday, today and forevermore. Right. So a lot of times how the Lord deals with me is he will release a word. And then I've got to wait for him to kind of push me into the scripture so that we can find what exactly um, he's, he's releasing upon us in this particular season. It's going to make sense in a minute. 
And so y'all ready? I want you to take notes. So um, I had this dream and in the dream, I'm not going to talk about the, um, I'm not going to talk about the, the, the details of the dream. That doesn't matter. But in the dream, um, there were two people and they were talking to me. There were two people and they were talking to me and I want you to write this down. And one of the, one of the voices said, you are standing in your everything. Write that down. You are standing in your everything. Hey, Elder Pam, you are standing in your everything. And then the person began to call and talk to, and I want you to write this word down, Justin. Justin, I don't, I don't know a Justin. I don't know a Justin in my life. Justin. And so they begin to converse with Justin, but they kept saying Justin. So when I woke up, I, I woke up out of that and that whole, you are standing in your everything. That thing was just like, I could hear it in my room. I could hear it in my ears. I could hear it in my heart. I mean, I heard a song out of it, that thing. I mean, I was up at like two to three to four. I was up and I, that's all I heard over and over and over as you are standing in your everything. And so when I kind of got up to pray, um, I wanted to look at the word Justin. And so I was like, you know, it could be two words just in like hear ye hear ye like this just in like this is the news just in justin and so when i but when i looked up the etymology of the word justin or the name justin of course it comes from the word justice it comes from the word justice and so um i said okay okay god so i know I, I kind of see where you're going with this, but I'm not, I'm just going to wait for you. I said, okay, God, what is the word of the Lord of how we're going into this fast? And now you're releasing a word and you're talking about justice. And you're saying to us, you're standing in your everything, or you're standing in the middle of your everything. And so the prophetic word, and then we're going to go into the scripture. But what I felt like the Lord was saying is that through this three day fast, listen, I can't make you. I'm not going to chide you. I'm not going to try to convince you, no, sort of, kind of, uh, not to, to go on this fast with us. But I feel like the Lord is saying that he, this is a season of justice. This is a season of justice. And, and, and what we're talking about is justice that was due your lineage. Um, justice that was due your namesake, justice that was due the family name, that some things are going to be returned to the lineage. And so we talked about this maybe last week, or I don't know, I talked about it with somebody. Am I yelling at you guys? I was talking about it with somebody. I think it was, it may have been the other group, but we have to understand that the father wants to restore back into our lineage prophetic cycles. Cycles are neutral. Cycles are neutral, right? Cycles are neutral. And so the father, when we talk about lineage, your lineage is actually a circle. It's actually a circle. And so it is the duplication of the God-ordained history in the present and in the future. It is the duplication of the God-ordained history in the present and the future in the present and the future. And so when we talk about, we always talk about binding and, you know, casting out and go and doing deliverance on the line to cast out the demonic cycles. But once the, the, the Bible is explicit, once you cast something out, now you've got to institute, you've got to put something in. And so what are we putting or putting back or placing back in the lineage? We are placing back in the lineage, prophetic cycles. We are putting back the historical, come on, the historical foundation that is supposed to be duplicated generation to generation to generation to generation. When you look at the scripture, he is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. When you look at each of the covenants, they look the same. So he's renewing with each generation right? So it's not an old thing. It is constantly being renewed, but it is the history of heaven that is being duplicated over and over and over and over. That I, the Lord, will be with you all the days of your life, and I will bless thee, and I will multiply thee, and I will, and I will, just like I did with your father, if you obey my word, if you obey my commandments, right? Over and over and over. So this fast, I believe that the 
father is saying, I am causing there to be a prophetic, the prophetic cycles to be put back, right? To be put back. Because what happens is when we do um, deliverance um, for the line, when we do deliverance, and we talk about this, you stand in proxy for the whole lineage. And so this is just, let me just grandmama you for a second, if this is okay. And so when you receive a prophetic word, you are receiving a prophetic word for the whole line. You are, you are receiving a prophetic word for the whole line. And so when you receive it, I need you to catch this. When you receive it, you're receiving it in the present. You are reserving it for the future because I'm receiving it, right? I'm receiving and I'm holding. I'm receiving and I'm building. But then I'm also receiving and restoring. Did y'all catch that? So when I get a prophetic word, it is God is not the God of one, he is the God of all. I pray this is making sense. So when I catch it, when I believe it, when I hold on to it, when I say I believe this thing, that this thing is for us, that God is speaking to us, I'm receiving it, right? Um, that's what an intercessor does. To intercede means to catch. It means to intercept. Come on, intercessors. It means to intercept, but I'm, I'm holding it, right? I, I received it, and it's on reserve. It's on reserve until the, the people who are going to take it from me and carry the ball, if you will, into the future. But I'm also receiving and restoring. And so what happens a lot of times, I pray this is making sense. A lot, what happens a lot of times is we just see us. And that's a trick of the enemy. It's a trick of the enemy for you to get a prophetic word and for us to not understand that he is restoring and reserving at the same time. He's restoring and reserving as you are receiving, right? He's restoring. Why does it matter that there is restoration in what is past, right? Because the story of the father must be duplicated. This is like DNA. This is the the, 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 the way that we could just make it as simple is DNA. And so when you have DNA, DNA is going down the line, it's going down the line, it's going down the line, it's going down the line. Something is inserted. Something's inserted, right? And so that something that's inserted, it begins to either war with the DNA that was going down the line, it pairs with the DNA that was going down the line, but it does not cancel out the DNA that's in the line. <laughs> and so what will happen is the prophetic cycle, the prophetic DNA has been going down the line and then something's inserted. So a lot of times we will just deal with what has been inserted. We will just pay attention to what has been inserted. And so once we deal with what's been inserted, we've got to begin looking at what the father had made our lineage to do, who he made our lineage to be, where he placed our lineage to go, and all those sorts of things. Right. And so as we go into 2020, I believe that you've got to believe that the father is restoring. He's restoring by way of justice what has always been in your line, what has been suppressed, what has been subdued and what has tried to be thwarted. So we're in Numbers chapter 27. Numbers chapter 27. I need y'all's Bibles open. I need you to see this for yourself. I need you to have your pen and your paper because you're going to follow the model. You're going to follow the model. You're going to follow the model because this is going to be good for you, okay? Listen, when we look at Jesus, and I always say this, Jesus is my mentor. Jesus is my mentor. Jesus is my mentor. Jesus is my mentor. Jesus broke every rule. If there was a rule, Jesus broke it. If there was a rule, Jesus broke it. Jesus broke every rule. Jesus broke every rule. He broke every rule. And so we have, when I look at Jesus and I see that he's, 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 he's not breaking the rule, but what's happening is he's reconciling. What's happening is he is showing us the real way that this thing is supposed to be working in the earth, how we've messed it up, how we've muddled it up. So when we meet with Jesus, we're really meeting with the true heart of God, right? We're meeting with the true heart of God. And so listen, the best place, the place that matters the most that you have courage is in the presence of God. I am, I am. And that's, 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 that's another show we're getting ready to release. Jesus is my mentor, right? 
the place that you need to have the most courage is with the Lord. Because the Lord is looking for people. No, don't steal that, Angela. Don't steal that. Don't, don't, don't steal that until I put it on a t-shirt. Don't, don't, don't take that. <laughs> He's looking for some people who their faith causes them to push into the true character and nature of him and past rules of man, laws of man, and how it's just been, been doing out here right? How are we doing out here and how we're accepting things. And when people tell you it's not supposed to be this way, when people tell you, well, this is the way we've always done it. When people tell you, well, this, well, this, well, this, well, this. God is saying, when you look at it and you look at me, does it look the same? When I look at it, the infrastructure, when I look at it, the construct, when I look at it, whatever they're telling me, and I look at God, is it the same? Is the word and the character the same? And if it's not, do you have enough faith? Do you have enough courage to say, hmm, this isn't right? Or God, how can this be? Where is the justice in this thing? So we're in Numbers chapter 27. We're going to start with verse one. Are y'all there? Am I yelling at you guys? I'm just so excited. Am I yelling at you guys? It's okay. It's all right. Then came the daughters of Sola, Sola, Sola Peshad. <laughs> I'm speaking in tongues. Then came the daughters of Sola Peshad, the son of Hefer, the son of Gilead, the son of Mashir, the son of Manasseh, the families of Manasseh, telling you the tribe, who is the son of Joseph. So this, these women are coming out of the tribe of Joseph right? Manasseh, one of his sons, the two tribes that came from Joseph, right? And the daughter's name was Mal Malia, Noah, Hogla, Milka, and, and Tirza. Tirza. I'm butchering their names, but it's okay. Y'all, this is Atlanta Hebrew. How about that? This Atlanta Hebrew. Okay? So Malia, her name means, are y'all ready? I want to give you the meaning of their names. Her name means disease. Her name means disease. I don't know, you listen. Her name means disease. Noah, her name means motion. So there was a disease in motion. There was a disease in motion. Mm -hmm. Hogla, her name means partridge which is a bird, but the root of her name means the house of partridge, or it has, it, it means the court, the door, the house, or the temple. Are y'all with me? The house, the door, the temple, the family place, partridge, and the second part is, is, is bird, right? And so we talk about what birds mean, but when you look at the first root of her word, it, it, inside of it is house of, temple, or court. So now we're looking at, when we look at this word justice, when we look at this word just in, right, which means just us, we see that inside of her name is court. So we see that there's a disease. I need y'all to see this. So she's in the middle. So we have one, two. We have daughter one, daughter two, three, four, five. Are y'all with me? So disease in motion, court. The fourth girl's name, Milka. Are y'all ready? Milka, her name means queen. And Tizra, her name means favorable. So we have disease in motion, court or family lineage, court being a root word, then all of a sudden we have queen and favorable. So we see that there's a shift when justice is inserted. I pray y'all see this. So when justice, if justice is right there or court is right there in the middle. So we see disease, motion, queen and favor. We have five daughters. We have five daughters. Are y'all with me? So we're still in verse one. All right. 
verse two, and they stood before Moses and Eleazar, the priest, and before the princes and the congregation. They stood before everybody that they were supposed to stand before. They stood before Moses, they stood before the priest, they stood before the princes, and they stood before the congregation. Five girls, five women, okay? And they said, verse three, our father died in the wilderness. He was not in the company of them that gathered themselves together against the Lord or the company of Korah, which is very important because <laughs> if we, everybody was wiped out, right? They, they said, our father died in the wilderness. He was not in the company of Korah. He died of his own sins. He was not of that company, right? He died of his own sins, but our father had no sons. Five girls. Why should? the name of our father be done away with from among his family because he doesn't have any sons. This doesn't make any sense. Are y'all seeing this? Are y'all seeing this? You got to see yourself in this. Why should five girls, they're standing before everybody. They are breaking every rule in the book. Do y'all see this? They are breaking every rule in the book. Five girls who should not have anything. Five girls who do not have anything that is coming to them. Five girls who are not the firstborn. And their father's name actually means firstborn. Five girls, no sons. They don't talk about there being any husbands. Five girls are standing before Moses, standing before the priest Eleazar, standing before the princes, and standing before the congregation. They're saying, wait a second. Our father... He was a part of the lineage. He died before crossing over. We have no brothers. He had no sons. Why should his name be cut off? Because he didn't produce any sons, right? I love this. So here it is. Moses brought their case before the Lord. I love this. The times say and the times dictate, boo, you just out of luck. You just out of luck. But I love this, that Moses, in the presence of Eleazar, the princes and the congregation, the Bible says Moses brought their cause before the Lord. And look at what the Lord said. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, the daughters of Soliathad speak right. Thou shalt surely give them a possession of an inheritance among their father's brethren. I need you to circle possession of inheritance. This deals with land. This deals with land. The possession deals with a portion of land mainly and mostly that is allotted through some sort of will and some sort of testament. And so when we're talking about God enlarging your territory, come on, spread out your tent pegs, God giving you more room, we're hoping God made room for us, space. God is opening up space if you want it. And I pray this is making sense. And the Lord said unto Moses, verse seven, they speak right. Give them a possession among their father's brethren. And thou shalt cause the inheritance of their father to pass to them. And, are y'all with me? Verse eight. And you shall speak to the children of Israel saying, if a man die and have no son, then shall, then shall ye cause his inheritance to pass unto his daughter. So a precedent, do y'all see this? A precedent was made. Five girls caused there to be a precedent on the books. History was changed in the times of man to match the history of heaven. 
Could it be that the father is saying, I'm causing justice. If you will cause, if you will come before me and bring what don't look right, even if the uh, times of man, the culture that we live in uh, says, uh, well, you were born this color or you were born in this country or you were born in this socioeconomic or because this happened in your lineage, because this is just the way it is. God is saying, will you bring it to me? Who will have the courage of five girls who will fight against, come on, the word of the day because it doesn't look like me. I, I, listen, if, if we, you, we, we got to walk this out with the daughters. We got to walk this out. How is it that God would pick and choose the least of the least it would look like slaves for 400 years and bring them into their own land, but he won't give some girls some land? That don't make no sense. That, don't, that doesn't measure up. This isn't making any sense. Y'all see this? He handpicked a nation of people who were slaves and brought them into a land that flows with milk and honey. He's no respecter of persons, but all of a sudden now he is. We about to lose everything. I pray this makes sense. We about to lose everything because we some girls. We about to lose everything because we look like this, sound like this, we came from this. We about to lose everything. I pray y'all see this. And so here it is. Remember what I said in my dream. You are standing in your everything. Five girls were standing in the land that really belonged to them. They were standing in the blessing that really belonged to them. They were standing in, in the thing and the promise that really belonged to them. And they were getting ready to lose it. But... Justin, but justice. And so as we hashtag the best week ever, I pray this is making sense. Hashtag the best week ever. I believe as we have crossed over into this month of December, this is the month of release that the father is saying that as we move through this month, we are going to see a release, but you're also going to see a release of justice. You're getting ready to see a release of justice. There has some, been some things that have been in your line that have been complete and utter injustice. And God says, I am the God of justice. I am the God that hates unjust scales. Where are the scales unjust in your lineage? Where are the scales unjust in your life? Where have they been tipping out of your favor? Why? Because God says, I favor you. And so if there are things that have constantly in cycles been out of your favor. We've got to bring that to God in the assembly. Come on in the assembly of the court and say, hold up, hold up, hold up. Wait a second. This is not the character and the nature of God for us. We've got to challenge it. Why? Because the father is saying, you are about to set a precedence. Oh, I pray y'all see this. Not only did they get to keep their land, but every girl who was a part of a family that had no sons got to keep hers too. And so the name of that father, the name of that lineage got to live on in that land. Five girls, grace, changed history. And so the father is saying, could it be that I released you in this cycle of time in your lineage, in the cycle of your lineage, in the cycle of the earth, because I am causing you through prayer and petition, through expectation and faith to begin to say, God, don't, I'm, I'm not even going to be like rebuke a cycle. I ain't going to be like cast it out. I'm going to say, God, where is your justice? God, where is your justice? Come on, I need y'all to see this. Where is your, I'm not gonna lay down and take this. I'm not gonna lay down. I'm not gonna just sit here and take this. This is the last December of this decade. And so don't let this decade pillage you. Don't let this decade rape you. Don't let this decade walk out the door with your stuff. What belonged to you? What was supposed to be in your hand? What were you supposed to transition out of this decade with? You gotta go in the presence of God and say, God, where is your justice? 
Hallelujah. I don't mean to yell at y'all. I pray y'all see this. Hashtag the best week ever, ever. There are some people who are going to rise up on this week while they are fasting and they are going to say, okay, God, I believe by faith that you released me in this cycle of time because you are causing me and calling me to be a type and a shadow of a deliverer in my line. There is going to be new precedent that is going to be passed on to the next generation and new precedent that is going to be reconciliation for the past in the name of Jesus. It is going to be this new precedent that is going to break poverty forever. It's going to be this new precedent that's going to break mental illness out of your line forever. It's going to be this new precedent. Come on, justice of God. Come on, justice of God. Come on, justice of God. He is the God who said, I hate unjust scales. Hallelujah. And so if he says, I don't like, I can't stand, I abhor unjust scales, then we've got to present our case to the Father. Come on, we've got to present our case, our case of the lineage. Notice they didn't say, well, we're not going to have anything, you know, we're going to be, you know, poor, we're going to be these five little girls who don't have anything. Notice they went in talking about their lineage. Notice they went in talking about their lineage. Hashtag the best week ever. Our lineage is being set free. Hashtag the best week ever. Marriages in your line are being set free. Hashtag the best week ever. Men in your line are being set free. Hashtag the best week ever. Teenagers and children in your line are being made free. Come on, justice. I didn't got excited. Come on, Justin. I pray this makes sense. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless you for Numbers chapter 27. We thank you, God, that you are speaking. We welcome justice. We welcome justice. We welcome the right arm of God in our lives. We welcome the right arm of God. Come on, in our lineage. We welcome the right arm of God in this next decade. We welcome the right arm of God, the arm of justice. Hallelujah. And so, God, we present, I present as an intercessor, as a prophetic sound. Hallelujah. These 39 people to you. And I say to you, King of glory, oh, God, let the, the courage of these five girls, let that courage rise up in these, your people, and let them bring their case before you and say, hold up. This isn't God. Come on, not this is, isn't fair, but this isn't God. This doesn't sound like God. This doesn't move like God. Come on, this doesn't maneuver like God. Come on, this doesn't have the same frequency, the same power as the word of the Lord. Where is the justice? Where is the justice? So Hallelujah. People keep dying in our line because of cancer. God, you said, you said, you said that by the stripes of your son, we were healed. And so you mean to tell me that cancer can run all up in our line? Oh, no. The justice of you causes the door to be shut. It causes it causes, I got excited. It causes the door to be shut and shut for good. Come on. The blood of Jesus is our justice. We're not going to take this. We're not going to live in fear. We're not going to be, we're not going to back back. We're not going to have evil foreboding. We're not going to think we're going to die early. No. Where is the justice? Hashtag the best week ever. Hallelujah. And so, Father, even on this week, this week of fasting for the wall, I believe, Father, that you are getting ready to, there's going to be some mighty deliverance that's taking place. I thank you, Father, that you're going to show up in the realm of dreams. You're going to show up in the realm, hallelujah, and cause the prophetic, the bubbling up of old things to begin to rest upon the Kotaya, the word of the Lord that was given five generations ago. We call for that word to rest now upon this time and see 
season of this lineage in the name and in the blood of Jesus, the word of the Lord that you gave uh, 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 to great, 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 great grandmother about uh, what type of lineage this was going to be. We thank you, God, that that word is still in the line, a will in the middle of a will. That cycle is still happening and it is still cycling through the line in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We are not left alone to fight the demonic on our own. I need y'all to hear this. We are not left alone to fight the demonic if we would just call on Jesus. Just like these five girls that they said, hold up. Let's call a meeting. Hold up. Let's call a gathering. Let's challenge this. God is on your side when we begin to challenge the demonic. When we begin to challenge what is unjust, when we begin to challenge that the, the, that just says to us feel like God and sound like God, uh-uh, we begin to challenge. We're not challenging it on our own. God is pushing you to challenge it. God is saying, bring it to me so I can put my gavel down in favor for your lineage in the name of Jesus. I believe this next decade is going to be so different. I believe this next decade for your lineage I believe it's going to smell different. It's going to taste different. It's going to sound different. You're going to walk different in this next decade in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And so hashtag the best week ever. We thank you, O King, that there's just some warfare that's getting ready to die. There is some warfare that is getting ready to die. There are some things that are getting ready to be laid to rest, dead and buried and eulogized on this week in the name of Jesus. And so we begin to name that which will be eulogized on this week. We decree and we declare for every person who will believe what the scripture has declared according to the character and the nature of God for them that the cycles of poverty will be laid to rest come on will be eulogized come on fear to step out fear to move forward fear to break out will be eulogized forever in the name of Jesus we put up a signpost that says over our lineage as for me and my house as for me and my house we will roll in the justice of God as for me and my house we will move in the word of the Lord as for me and my house come on that serve the Lord is more broad than just serve the Lord in the capacity that we see it. It means we will produce, we will produce, we will produce according to what God has called us and calls us to produce. Come on, we will engage that which God has called and calls us to engage as for me and my house. And so hashtag the best week ever. Thank you, Father. We don't talk about days in fasting. We talk about every single meal, every single time a piece of meat is turned over, every time a grain of rice is turned over, every time a drink is turned over. God, pour out your justice. Pour out your justice. Every hour that people pray, pour out your justice. When somebody whispers to you, God, I need you to meet me in this thing. I don't have all of the answers. Well, oh God, pour out your justice. Pour out your wisdom upon your people this week. Can any of your plans be thwarted? And so God, we say no. And so that which is coming to thwart your plans, we thank you, God, that you have a plan. And so we begin to pray into the master plan. We begin to pray into the plan of the master. Oh, God, sit now your justice. Oh, God, sit now your plan. Oh, God, sit now your word. And don't let it be hindered or thwarted or delayed in any manner in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I believe by faith that there's going to be, this is the season, but no hiring happens in December. Y'all already know that. No hiring is supposed to happen in December because it is time the world shuts down and it's time to go on holiday and vacation. We decree that there's going to be unprecedented numbers of people being employed. 
where you have not been able, you better you write this down. This ain't the knees making up stuff because I ain't that deep. Where you have not been, you've been putting in uh, application and resume and application and resume and you haven't got one hit. Shake yourself, baby, because this is the month where you will be hired in the name of Jesus. You will walk into January employed. You will walk into January with a salary in the name of Jesus. And gone is the day, we're going to talk about it. Gone is the day where you get higher, but it is beneath the standard. It is beneath your pay grade. They want you to do something up here, but they want to pay you down here. This is not the decade where you are going to be, uh, there's going to be a gap. There's going to be a, a wealth gap, wealth of knowledge ter in terms of what you're getting paid. No, we decree and declare that you will get paid what you ask for. And so God, I'm asking you to give your people courage to open their mouth and to say what they're supposed to be getting in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And so if there would be, if there would be discouragement, if there would be, oh God, I don't know what we're going to do. Oh God, it seems like nothing is in my favor. Oh God, it seems like nothing is changing. Oh God, it seems like nothing is turning. Well, God, I say to you in prayer for them in the place of worship. Well, that's not your character. That's not your nature. When we roll with you, everything changes. When we roll with you, everything is shifting. There is nothing stagnant about you, God. There's nothing stagnant about your word. There's nothing stagnant stagnant about your blessing. There's nothing stagnant about your mind. There's nothing stagnant about your history, God. And so that means things are moving. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so God, open the eyes of your servants so that they can see what you are doing. Open the eyes of your servants and then God, give them wisdom in the name of Jesus. You will not go out of 2019 broke and pitiless, says God. You will not, you will not, you will not. You are a king's kid. It called the my soul. And so we do not put God in a box. Listen. Listen, 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 listen. We don't sit up here and just say stuff. We don't sit up here because if I did, I would be like, well, give me cash at me 1995 and I'm going to tickle your ears. No, don't cash at me nothing. Don't PayPal me nothing. This is the word of the Lord. So you might as well take it. It's free. Hallelujah. You will not leave out of this decade penniless. You will not leave out of this decade with empty pockets. You will not leave out of this decade, my shokoshe. You have no idea what God is getting ready to do over these three days of Moshe, Rokusa. There's some things, listen, there's some things, there's some things that you, we, we got to understand. There's some things in our foundation that's still speaking. Uh, it's speaking to, uh, to our potential and it's speaking to our purpose. And it says, well, you should be this and you should do that and you should go there. And it sounds good and it sounds like the voice of God, but God is saying, no, baby, that's not for you. You don't understand and I am calling you to be the restorer and the repairer of the breach of this thing through my spirit. And so during these three days, I'm getting ready to humble your soul. I'm getting ready to humble your ear and you're gonna hear which way to go. You're gonna hear a voice in your ear that will say, go this way, go this way and do that thing. And so what's getting ready to happen to you is the bondage that's been on your hands, the chains and the fetters because we're outside of the will, the real will of God. We're out, those things are getting ready to be broken and baby, you are about to fly, you are about to run, you are about to do in the name of Jesus, hashtag the best week ever. Ha, do cold rabas. And so I don't care what 2019 looked like, what 2018 looked like, what 2017 looked like, what 2010 looked like. I don't care what your divorce looked like. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. Behold, God is doing a new thing. Do you not know it? God is bringing you into it. God is allowing you to touch it. God is allowing you to walk here in it. He's causing you to walk in the way of it. And so all we're doing on these next three days is saying, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on and practice it. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on and practice it. Yes, Lord. When you wake up in the middle of the night and God shows, just say yes, Lord. Don't say, oh, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Can I do that? I don't know. No, 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 no. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You want me to do? Okay. Yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lord. That's what you call me? Okay. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. That's what you require of me? Okay. Okay. Yes, Lord. You are restoring the 
yes in the line. Turn down the roll call. Your yes is putting out rebellion in the line. Your yes is putting out rebellion. God says that in the line, I cause your voice to have the authority, come on, of the line. And so when you say yes, Lord, it's restoring the yes. Oh, God. Hashtag the best week ever. And so King of glory, Lord of hosts, we just thank you. We bless you. We praise you. We praise you. We praise you because it's not going down like this. We praise you. We praise you because we get ready to dance out of 2019 and dance our way into 2020. Oh God, we bless you because we are a people of purpose. I need you to say that. You are a person of purpose, baby. You are a person of purpose, baby. You are a person of authority. You have an anointing. You got a work to do. You got a work to do. And just like Jesus, you're going to say, I do the will of the one who sent me and I finish it. And I finish it. And so your line is getting ready to finish the work. Finish the work that the Father released you guys to do in the name of Jesus. Hashtag the best week ever. So I don't know what some of you guys got on this live. I don't know what some of you guys, I know it's the, it's the beginning of the month. It is. It's the beginning of the month. It's your bills are due and things are due and it's Christmas. And, you know, everybody, you probably some of us that are counting up all our little money we think we got. I need you to stop it. <clears throat> I need you to stop it. I need you to reject that. all of that. We reject it. We, and it and we, if you said, well, I ain't got it. I don't know what we're going to do. We, we decree and declare that po mouth. That, is, that will not be in the presence of God. We will not disrespect his presence. We will not disrespect his presence. Well, Lenise, how is that disrespecting his presence? Can you imagine your child? Let's, let's say Sunday dinner. Let's say Thanksgiving dinner. Let's say, I don't know, y'all did that Thanksgiving stuff. Let's say Thanksgiving dinner. <clears throat> Your child come in there and they see this plate of food. They see this plate and they say, oh, this is what we're doing. This is, our, this, is, this is it. This is what we got. This is, this is what we got. You will feel some kind of way. <clears throat> you will feel some kind of way because this is what you provided. This is what you provided. Right. And when that child, how many of you, your children have stood in a thing and they don't even all they see is what's before them. They don't see what's behind this moment. My child does it all the time. You are, you don't have vision because you're not really dealing with me. I don't know what you're thinking about. I ain't never let you down. But you he forget that 13 year old forget. And so they'd be like, oh, man, this is what it is. Not knowing that behind this comes another level, comes another thing. There's another door, but this ain't it, baby. This ain't it. But when he does that, it makes me mad. Well, I shut all the doors and I say, you know what? Kitchen closed, we done here. Go on up to your room, go out up there, right? And so, but that's what we do with God. Not realizing that there's something behind this. Don't limit God. You don't know what December is gonna hold. You don't know what God's got up his sleeve for you. You don't understand the blessing that's coming down the pipeline. All God wants you to do is say, yes, Lord. That's all he will stay in your lane. Stay in your lane and just say, yes, Lord. That's all he's asking you to do. Stay in your lane. Stay in your lane and say, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. And so I don't know, you know, what you're facing or what you think you're facing or what you think you see, but we lock arms tonight and we say, God, open the eyes of your servant so that they can see. They can see the provision. They can see the justice. They can see that the place they're standing in, they're standing in their everything. You are standing in your everything. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus tonight, we just bless you. We just bless you that you're causing your people to come and to spread out in the more of you. In the more of you. I thank you, God, that this December, that this will be a time where we enjoy you. This will be a time where we experience more of you. I thank you, Father, that every need that is represented in, in the 45 people that are on, that every single need is met. Every single solitary need is met. And so even for the people, because listen, you know, I'm not going to act like we all up in here doing, being obedient to what God told us to do. Now, you know, it's, when I said, what do I mean by that? When he says grace. Listen, okay. So. If, if I have paid the light bill, I need y'all, you know, roll with me with this, right? 
If I have paid the light bill and my son is sitting in the dark in his room because he refuses to turn on the light, that's his room. Now, if you're too lazy to turn on the light, boo, you're going to sit in the dark. Do y'all see that analogy? Do y'all see that? The grace is I provided the electricity. That's the grace. That's the grace. I provided the electricity. Now you got to take your little wrist and you got to flick it. You got you to gotta flick it. You got to flick the light on. You got to just flick the wrist. Just flick it. And the light will come on. The light's provided. The electricity is running through the house. It's already provided. I need you to flick your wrist and cut the light on. Now, if you refuse to flick your wrist and cut the light on, baby, you're going to sit in the dark. Does that make sense? Now, we got to be obedient because it, the electricity is running through the house. It's running through the house. Now, where you are, you got to turn the light on. You got to. We got to be obedient. We got to do what he's telling us to do. If, 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 if the Holy Spirit is telling you to make a phone call, if the Holy Spirit is telling you to do this, if the Holy Spirit is saying, go here, go there, you've got to go here or go there. You, you, if he's saying, submit your resume here, you've got to sub Listen, flip the wrist. Just flip, flip the wrist. Turn the light on. Flip the wrist. Turn the light on, right? But even in that, there's grace. What, what's the grace? The grace is that we're locking arms. And we're saying that the provision of God is going to meet you. And that even in the place, because a lot of times we don't flick the wrist because of unbelief. Because we have been in a place before where we thought we were turning on a light or something. And we didn't understand the season that we were in. And we just got so much disappointment. So much disappointment. And so sometimes we can confuse disappointment with process. With process. Sometimes we, dis we, we you know... I don't understand. We were in the season, the process. Can I, is this, I just want to help y'all. Is it okay if I just help y'all for a second? Now, listen, I've been homeless. Yes, I have. I have been on my own since I was 16. I was 16 when I was on my own, 16. I had no clue. I had no clue. I had no clue. No clue. No clue what I was doing. No clue. <laughs> I'm just being honest. I had no clue. And I had no help. So when you talk about the master of robbing Peter to pay Paul, I would rob Peter, I would pay Paul. And then when Paul would turn his back, I would hit him over the head and I would take the money I gave him and his money and I would go and give that to Matthew. And so eventually that catches up with you, right? I had, when I say no wisdom, None, none, no wisdom. So with me, the, when I was homeless, yes, I've been homeless, but I have to take responsibility. I got to take responsibility because I, I done robbed somebody too many times. It just didn't work out in my favor. God had to take me through a battery of process, y'all need y'all to hear this, to break me of stupidity. And so, listen, so then I got shell-shocked because I was for real homeless. I was for real homeless. Like, I was, and I was in college too. And one of my outfits was white. Let's let, just let that sink in, let that sink in. One of my outfits was white. All my clothes were in the trunk. I know, I was just a little comical. You can laugh. And so I was trying to go to college. I was trying to hang on. Dumb stuff. But I was, I was doing dumb stuff. I, I'm, just, I'm just telling the truth. I'm just doing dumb stuff. And it caught up with me. And, um, and so after I, after I went through the homeless stage is when I started selling drugs. The process just wasn't working. Some of us is hard headed. I'm one of them. I'm one of them. That's why the Holy Spirit was like, we got to get you saved early because we're going to need to roll with you, boo boo, because you just don't, you just going to do some stuff out here ain't got no sense. So here it was. Um, I'm out here selling drugs. 
And what got me, what stopped me from selling drugs is I went to jail. Yes, I did. Yes, I, I know I don't talk about this, but I'm, I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm going to tell you so y'all can laugh at me. So I went to jail, guys. What happened was back in the 90s, they started this thing called Click or the Ticket. And I got caught, not clicked. And so when I went to find the ticket, all these counties are all up in here together. Nobody had my ticket. Nobody had my ticket. So I'm on the way home from doing like an open night, my open mic night or something. I didn't have no drugs on me that night. I had nothing in my car. I usually, I, if I did, when out at night, I was usually pretty clean. I was smart in that. I was very cunning. I was dumb, but I was smart, right? Dumb, but smart. So they pulled me over in this county, a different county, and they say, hey, you have a bench warrant out for your arrest. So instead of taking me to the county <laughs> that the bench warrant was out for my arrest, they arrest me in this county because my tag was in the wrong place. They just gave me a bunch of trumped up charges. And they took me to jail. So I got in jail, got in the jail. Of course, I'm the youngest person there. I'm in here with all these grown women, grown women. Are y'all listening? Because this is my truth. So I ain't called nobody. You know, I was like, I don't know who I'm gonna call. This was four cell phones, guys. So, you know, we, we used to commit num numbers to memory. I had a beeper, but you know, we had the numbers in our, in our head, right? There's no cell phones. So I hadn't used my phone call yet. And so it was late and it was on the weekend. And you know, on the weekend, um, on the weekend, you don't get out. On the weekend, they're not seeing anybody. On the weekend, you're not getting out of jail. If you're arrested, you're, they're, you're, they're going to put you in population in their county jail. So they were like, ma'am, little girl, we're going to put you in population. I'm like, no, no, somebody's coming to get me. So for whatever reason, Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit wanted me to get the full experience of this. So they were like, okay. So I'm in the holding cell. And there's this older lady who's mad. I don't know why she's mad, but she's angry. She's angry. And so in the holding cells, they had the, the cell door open. So you could, you were in the holding cell, but you could kind of walk in and out of the cell on the floor, right? And so she um, started like stuffing stuff in the toilet. She started stuffing stuff in the toilet. And so they was like, everybody get in the cell, get in the cell. And so all the, we were like, you know, we get in the cell, the lady, and it's gonna grow some of you guys out. The lady starts making herself do number two, and she's wiping the number two on the walls. It was, it was right then. I was like, I'm not cut out for jail. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I can't go to jail. <laughs> it was right then. It was like the bells went off. It was like, Anise, if you go to jail, you can't get out of here. So then she's wiping. She's wiping. So we're in the cell that smells and she's wiping the walls. And then they pepper spray us. So there's boo-boo on the wall and we can't see. I need you, I just need you, I just need you to get the whole visual. I need you to get the whole visual. They pepper spray the floor because she's acting a fool. And there's boo-boo on the walls, guys. There's boo-boo on the walls. And so you're like, I'm like, I'm not made for this. I'm too fragile. I'm too fragile. I ain't no drug dealer. I ain't a real drug. I mean, my whole life was handed to me. My whole life was handed to me. And so listen, I said all that to say. When, when I started getting myself together, which was a long road, for some of us, God takes us around the mountain because he's got to get stuff in us. I'm just being honest. He's got to get stuff in you, in your character. And so one of the big things for me was I had to be broken of being cunning. Street smarts, right? Because cunning isn't faith. Cunning isn't faith. Crafty isn't faith, right? 
I, I, I can go out here. I can, you know what I'm saying? I can, I can, you know what I'm saying? And the Holy Spirit's like, no, ma'am, <laughs> no, ma'am. <laughs> so for, for a long time, I was in fear of being homeless, right? People be like, well, fear, that's never going to happen. And then there's a whole other people who were like, it happened to us. I've been homeless before. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, usually that's what fear does. Fear causes you to see something that's never going to happen, right? You imagine the worst. But when you've lived it, when you've lived it and you've been there and you've seen it, you're like, oh, there's a probability. There's, there's a, and I've been on the bad side of the probability number, right? And so for a long time, guys, I was in fear. I lived with, with, with cardboard boxes in my coat closet. And every first of the month, I would pull out the cardboard boxes, like clockwork, like clockwork. Rolling with God, walking with God, working. But that thing with fear, right? And so because I had been disappointed before, because I had dealt with that before, not realizing that the Lord allowed me to touch that because he was producing something in me. He was like, listen, we got to get some stuff out of you so I can bring you into. We, I, cannot, we, I cannot war with you in this next place with what's on the inside of you, Anise. I pray I'll see this. And so some of the disappointment some of the things that you've touched and you've tasted that process was not to disappoint you, but what it was for your appointment. It wasn't disappointment. It was appointment. And so the father says that there's an appointment beyond this place for you. There's a place I've appointed you to, and we can't have any of those shenanigans. We cannot have, you cannot be in and out. You cannot be back and forth. We cannot do that. So you've got to go through this process to get this out of you. This, the, your process was your deliverance. That was your deliverance. I got delivered in that jail cell with that boo-boo on the wall and that tear gas in my eyes. I got delivered. That was my deliverance minister. The Holy Spirit was looking at me like, so you want some of this? <laughs> He's like, for real? Do you want some of this? Because this is where you're going. Do you want some of this? You really want? So my deliverance minister happened. My deliverance session from selling drugs happened in a jail cell from clicking her ticket with pepper spray in my eyes. It, there is no disappointment in God. There is no disappointment in God, but there is an appointment. And the father is tied to that thing. The father cares about that appointment because people are tied to that appointment. People are tied to that appointment. Is this making sense? I pray this is making sense. And so that's why, I, and I'm not, I'm not talking about anybody else. Every, listen to me real clear when I say this, lean in. Everybody's consecration is different. Everybody's consecration is different. And so I've had conversations, you know, with people and they talk about, you know, my honorarium or I don't, I don't have one. Right. And they're like, hey, that's not using wisdom. You're supposed to have, you're supposed to do, 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 do. my consecration. Because I ain't fin to be no hustler in the kingdom. And because I was once a hustler. I need y'all to hear this. I need y'all to hear this. Because I came from that. Because I had to hustle my way since I was 16. I started hustling my way when I was 16. Now that I am in this appointment, I'm not going to be a hustler. So I have all of these restraints around. I have all of these checks and balances around me. God, God will take care of me. God will take care of me. Anise, you need to do this. Anise, Anise. No, 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 no. Because you don't understand where I came from. And 
and I remember the jail cell with the boo boo on the wall and the pepper spray in my eyes. No, thank you. No, thank you. I'm good. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I promise you. <laughs> Everybody's consecration is different. I don't care. This is just a, this is just a grandmama you moment. I don't care. I don't care what everybody is doing. I don't care. What is your consecration? Whatever that is, stick to it. Whatever that is, stick to it. Whatever it is, whatever it is, whatever it is, I'm telling you, whatever it is, stick to it. Listen, is this okay? Can I, is this okay if I tell you my truth? I know y'all be like, Anise, we see why you on this prayer wall because child, you got a lot going on. <laughs> okay, so y'all know my, my degrees are in, um, are in marketing. So I'm ABD, all but dissertation in marketing, okay? So when it comes to social media, when it comes to marketing, I know all of that and I could do that. But remember, I'm a hustler. So in my business, or I used to be, I'm a recovering hustler. Hi, my name's Denise. I'm a recovering hustler. Okay. So in my business, I will do uh, marketing practices, but they're all on the up and up, right? Uh, everything's on the up and up. Nothing sleazy. All right. So after I stopped selling drugs, I went to selling alcohol because <laughs> it was legal. I don't know. I don't know why, guys. I don't know why I just went from the frying pan to I don't. I don't know. I don't know. So I tried to be funny, and I was like, "Well, I ain't gonna go to jail." So so I started bartending and I started um, managing clubs in Atlanta during the '90s. I mean, 2000s. Yes, 2000s. So that was when the club scene was real big. You know, I didn't drink. I I didn't drink then. I don't drink now, but I went through a two, that didn't sound right. I went through a two year stint where I drank and I did drugs right after my, my father passed. I'll get into that later. So I didn't drink then, but I had a hustle because I was a hustler. So because I um, knew how to wear my makeup and I knew how to do my hair, I knew how to do everything, they gave me the, the best place that got the most money. So I didn't drink. So guys would come up there and be like, hey, girl, can I buy you a drink? So I'm thinking, hmm, how could I work this for my benefit? Because I don't drink, right? So what I would do is I would take a bottle of Belvedere. And for those people who used to drink, uh, the bottle is... Um, it has like, it's, it's clear, but it has like a thick kind of film over it. And so what's the liquid that goes inside of it is clear. So I would, <laughs> I would take an old bottle of Belvedere and I will fill it up with water. So because this was considered higher priced or top shelf. And so you put it on the top shelf. And so whenever anybody would come and say, hey, do you want to drink? I would say, okay. And I would pour myself a glass of water that was in a Belvedere bottle, which came with a price tag of like $20 back then. That was my money. So he was paying $20 for me to drink a glass of water. Are y'all are y'all <laughs> Right? So I was stealing. That's stealing. So I was stealing. S-T-E-A-L-I-N-G. I was, I was, I wasn't breaking the law. Right. So I couldn't go to jail, but I was still stealing for people. I was still stealing for people. Right. So listen, listen, you got to know your consecration. You got to know your consecration. So out here, I told the Lord, Lord, whatever you're going to do with your ministry, this is all I do is show up and give people the word. That's why the lights are, are down. If you look like vampire diaries, I ain't got on no makeup. We are not. Been there, done that, got the t-shirt. I know my consecration. I pray this makes sense. I pray this makes sense. You got to know your boundaries and you got to set your boundaries. And you got to set your limits, right? All of us come, all of us come from a different place, right? All of us come from something. All of us come from something. And the enemy's always going to be trying to seduce you back and will you back, even though that's the very thing that God will use. So there's a fine line that you've always got to walk and you've got to have your constraints in place so that you make sure you're walking with God and you haven't slipped back. 
right? So I don't know how we got there. Now y'all know I was in jail. But whatever. Praise the Lord. I didn't do any hard time. I did boo-boo time, but I didn't do hard time, right? So anyway, I believe that this is going to be a good week. I pray that you guys do. We're going to start fasting tomorrow. It's Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, along with your consecration. So don't say, well, we consecrated, so I'm already fasting. No, this, this is really, really, you know, make it a sacrifice. Make it a sacrifice. The scriptures that we're fasting over, 2 Kings chapter 6 and 7, we did a little bit of teaching on that already. Um, go back and watch some of the te teachings from the last, um, the last week or so. And really, um, y'all are funny. <laughs> I can see the comments. I'm done. Um, really hone in on what, remember, fasting doesn't change. Fasting doesn't change God. Fasting and prayer changes us. And I'm not trying to manipulate the hand of God, right? I'm not trying to manipulate the hand of God. I'm trying to flow with the hand of God. I'm trying to flow with God. I'm not trying to manipulate God. Fasting is not to manipulate God. Prayer is not to manipulate God. God is God. He's set. It's set. It's set. It's set. It's set. So we're not manipulating. We are, we are, we are getting ourselves in place to roll with, to be in agreement with God, right? It's as close as you can get uh, to dry. And listen, I'm not going to throw out here something for we have a group of, I don't know how many people. And we don't want it to get religious because a lot of people will say, well, I can't do that. So for you, for you, what is the sacrifice? What's the sacrifice? You know, if you're working and, you know, you're doing all these things, you know, you're probably not going to be able to drive. Right. Um, but can you do liquid? Can you do water? Right. Can you do uh, water or dry up until three or six or whatever? What is what is pushing it for you, for you, in terms of sacrifice? I pray that makes sense. Because we want everybody to, we want to do this corporately, right? And we don't want people to say, well, this is too hard. We want you to do what is your sacrifice, but be for real. Be for real. Don't be like, I ain't finna eat pork. And you don't eat pork anyway. It's not sacrifice. Right? <laughs> I'm not going to eat pork. I'm going to eat pork for a week, but you don't eat pork, right? So what's your sacrifice? It's just three days. Um, we'll get on and probably do, you know, some, a little bit of teaching. Um, we've, we've come through this cycle for the last two weeks. This is the last time I'm inviting all of the prayer partners to do it again. Um, we really, we really believe that we're going to see miracles, signs, and wonders, particularly in the place of, of resources, of resources. It's not so that we could, you know, wear Gucci and be Gucci man and have a gold grill with our name in, in, engraved in the front. And so we'd be like, Anise, when you smile, no, that's not what it's for. What we believe that the Father has called us and ca is causing us to be financers of the kingdom. To be financers of the kingdom. We believe that there's climate change and the Father is going to use people to bring in the climate change. Right. We believe that the economies are shifting. Where are the Elijah's? We talked about this in the in the uh, we have another room. It's a secret room. Where are the Elijah's? Right. When you look at Second Kings, chapter six, going into chapter seven, that they were Samaria was in great famine. It was it. He found the king in sackcloth and ashes in the threshing floor. They were eating their babies. And Elijah opened his mouth because he understood his God. He knew the character and the nature of his God. And he knew this is not the will of God. This is not the character of my God. And he opened his mouth and he changed the economic climate by this time tomorrow. By this time tomorrow. And listen, Elijah didn't even, the Lord didn't even tell him that there were four lepers. When he said, by this time tomorrow, look it up. In verse three, it says, and there were four lepers who were sitting outside the gate of the city. Where are the Elijahs? And so I believe that we are a type and a shadow of that. 
where we, on the strength of the character, the nature, and the word of the Lord, we will open our mouths. God, we know that God has placed us in particular places. Arise and shine, your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. A deep darkness, a deep darkness has covered the earth, but kings, nations shall come to your light shall come to your light. I believe that the Father is calling and causing you to be the light in economic darkness. We're getting ready to see some times, guys. We're getting ready to see some times. And so I believe the Father is saying, I'm, I'm, there's going to be some shifting, but I will not put the, the, the wealth, I will not put economies, I will not put a corporation in the hands of those who cannot be trusted or who do not trust me and they do not trust me with their identity. Amen. Amen. By this time tomorrow. Right? So anyway, so hashtag the best week ever. We're starting to fast. Listen, if you mess up, it's cool. Repent and get back on it. If you mess up, it's cool. Repent and get back on it. When, lean in. Whenever you're doing something, and deliverance is really for real getting ready to happen. It's going to be one of the hardest things you've ever done. Expect to wake up in the morning and to be ravished in hunger. It, 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 when, we, when you're striking gold, listen, it's expect. Expect for, you know, if you're an emotional eater, expect for your emotions to be manipulated. If you mess up, it's okay. It's okay. Just get right back up and get right back on. Be tenacious about this. Believe that the Father is breaking through. He is breaking. What did David say? He's breaking through. He broke through for me like many waters. Believe that the God of breakthrough is breaking through for you and that your fasting is just an agreement with God what you're doing in me right? I don't know why you, we praying for you, Tanja, because you got you. I don't know why you got you. We praying for you. <laughs> I love messing with her, right? Yep. And so we do it again. Listen, anytime you, you, you are at the moment of breakthrough and you're doing something that the enemy cannot really war against, expect shenanigans. And that's let you know you're on the right track. When you fail, get back up quickly. Why? Because you're on the right track. God doesn't say, oh no, we're not going to break through. I don't know why he talks like that, right? But, you know, oh no, we're not going to break through for them because, oh my gosh, they ate some peanuts. They ate some peanuts. No, you finish chewing your little peanuts. Chew your peanuts. Swallow your little peanuts. Drink some water. Go ahead, because you know you're thirsty after you ate the peanuts. Go ahead, drink some water. Mm -hmm. Drink your little water. And then repent. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you. We cannot fast without the help of the Holy Spirit. We cannot fast without the help of the Holy Spirit. We cannot pray without the help of the Holy Spirit. We cannot worship without the help of the Holy Spirit. Say to the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, I need your help. I cannot do this. Right? And even if you owe head fast, you know, you fast and you fast and you fast. It never gets easy. It never gets easy, especially when you are striking the ground, especially when you are pushing back. Some things are happening in the realm of the spirit. It's going to be a fight. And so when you chewing on the peanuts, you should be like, hmm, this is a sign. Breakthrough is happening. Just go with it. Repent, get back up. Repent, get back up. Repent, get back up. Repent, get back up. Is this making sense? Don't be like, oh my God, I ate peanuts again. I don't know why I always eat peanuts. I don't know why. I got Listen, don't, ain't nobody got time for that. You are wasting hours. Repent and move on. Amen? Amen. So for the next three days, we're going to be fasting. So in the morning time, all right, is, I, I just want to help you all if that's okay. In the morning time, listen. So in, in lieu of eating, we are spending time with Jesus. We're eating Jesus. We're eating the fruit of the presence of the Lord, we're, right? 
So you got to make sure you have your word. <laughs> you got to make sure you have your word. You got to make sure you're praying. It ain't got to be, listen, some of you guys are in really bad moods. You guys are. And you just, you just mad and you mad. You just mad. You be praying mad. You just be mad. Okay, Father, I'm in your presence. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want right there. You know, you, you listen, just sit there. Just sit there. Just sit there. Don't say nothing. It's okay. Just, just speak to him in your mind. Sing songs to him in your heart because you're angry. <laughs> right? Um, uh, break up the scripture. Set alarms on your phone. So maybe set an alarm for every four hours, right? Listen, prayer is as simple as pulling out the word. Are y'all listening? It's as simple as pulling out the word and reading the word out loud. Even if it's a whisper because you're in your cubicle, you know, even this, you know. But Elijah said, by this star tomorrow. Don't get fired because they think you're crazy. We need you to keep that job. Don't get fired because they think you're crazy. No. So it, it set an alarm. When that alarm goes off, maybe it's like six verses. Read those verses out loud. So that means tonight, prep a little bit. Prep. Know what parts the, of the scripture stand out to you. And those parts that stand out to you, then when that alarm goes off at 9 a.m., you are going to be reading 2 Kings chapter 6, verses 5 through 12. Right. When it goes off at lunchtime, maybe at lunchtime, you go, you read the whole chapter of chapter seven out loud while you're walking around, you know, your place of work or whatever. Right. Maybe you have a call with with a friend. Listen, get your friends. They don't have to be a part of the prayer wall. If you have best friends, we should be fasting together. We should be fasting together. If you're, if, if you're like my bestie, let's fast, right? I know some of us have best friends and then we have prayer partners. I need my best friend to, to pray, right? And I need to pray for my best friend. So why not have a group or, or two or three people where we get on and we talk about what the Lord said? What did the Lord say to you during your time? And then we, and then we pray over it, right? We talk about it. We encourage each other, right? There's safety in numbers. Why not? Why not? Right? You know, for some of us, though, you know, the Lord is going to be talking to you about the people you're taking with you into the new decade. We can't be taking. Mm -mm. Girl, you done changed. I don't know why you won't go to a club with us no more, girl. Shoot. No, no. I stopped doing that like two decades ago. Right? <laughs> I haven't been to a club with you in two decades, right? And sometimes we just need to leave, let some things rest, right? But if you have some friends, like call them up and say, "This is I'm fasting uh, for the next three days because my next decade can't look like my, how it's looked. I can't, I'm not going to die like my grandmother died. I'm going to live for Jesus. And I, I want you to live for Jesus too. So what is the Lord saying for us? What should we be doing in 2020, right? So let's fast together. So set some alarms, read your, read your Bible out loud. In the morning time, listen, sometimes I'll be cold, sleepy, hungry, frail. I'll be like, I'm so frail. <laughs> Y'all know I'm full of the actress. I'll be like, oh, Jesus, Jesus, I'm so frail. <laughs> so in the morning time, I love to sing the scripture. Love. Just open up your Bible and just sing it. Just, I don't care what it sounds like. Just sing it. Just sing it. By this time tomorrow, 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 tomorrow. <laughs> just sing it. Just sing the scripture. Sing it. Sing it. Sing it. Sing it. Sing the scripture. Right? It's going to take you into praise. It's going to take you into worship. And then you're going to see uh, insight and, and revelation really rest upon you and you're going to be in the presence of the Lord. There are no rules here. The only rule is to make sure we're communing with God because God's going to start talking to you about some things. Always have your pen and your paper ready because remember, you're doing this for your lineage. And for a lot of us, we don't know what we're warring against. You had no idea that there was a curse that has been in the lineage because you never even knew these people. 
And so when the Holy Spirit begins to talk to you about it and gives you instruction on how to break it, and it could just be something real simple. It's not real deep. It's not, it's, I just do my best repenting overnight. I'll wake up in the middle of the night and I'll step in the bed and be like, Jesus, I repent. I repent for this. And, and then a lot of times it'd be connected to the lineage. They'd be connected to the lineage, right? And so have your pen in your paper and just go with the Holy Spirit. The next three days is going to be an amazing adventure that I believe is going to uh, set the captives free and it's going to bring a level of freedom and joy and peace to you. And then I wanted to pray for this. I know we've been on. Is this okay? I wanted to, I wanted to thank you, Holy Spirit. I want to pray for this. If you've had a dream about eating junk food, I know y'all are like, she's all over the place. <laughs> so if you have a dream and it's eating junk food, this is what the Holy Spirit just was talking to me about today. And I just want to pray this for you. It could be, of course, you're eating junk, right? You are what you eat, not the idiom. You are what you eat. And so junk in will equal junk out. So maybe you're around people with junky conversation. Maybe you're listening to junky music, you know, junk something. But then there's another side of the coin. And if you see yourself in the dream, in a dream and you're eating junk food, maybe it was a dream and it was like um, pizza or nasty, like, like, it, and it didn't even look right. It just looked like, like nasty pastries or something and you were eating it you were eating it listen i know this is gonna sound crazy just go with it and just pray about it listen just pray about it some of that is a is a covenant forged against your health it's a covenant that and so if you feel like your eating habits are trash and you don't know why and you don't know why if you if your appetite has just picked up and you don't know why your appetite is picked up or, or you're putting on weight and you're really not um, eating a whole lot. Well, I'm talking about Walida from the spiritual sense, right? When it, whatever's happening in the natural, it came from uh, somewhere in the spirit realm, right? And so I, just for an example, I had a dream probably, probably like um, six months ago, maybe five months ago. I don't know, this year sometime. And in the dream, it was these weird looking, crazy looking pastry things and like this huge pizza thing. And my son was with me and my son was like, I don't want none of that. That is nasty. And I remember in the dream, they kept trying to like, whatever this was, they kept trying to stick it in my mouth. And it was like this pastry stuff wrapped in icing and ugh, right? And so listen, you have to understand that one of the biggest places that the enemy is fighting us in, especially in the church, is our health. It's our weight. It's what we eat. It's diabetes. It's high blood pressure. It's all of those things. And a lot of times we don't, we don't even think about it from the spiritual aspect, that there are covenants being forged, right, that we're saying yes to, and it's killing us. Right. And so I just want to pray for you real quick, if that's OK. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we uh, ask on the basis of the blood and the basis of the name of your dear son, that any 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 dream, even all the way back to when we were a child, we were a child um, that forged a covenant that was an evil altar that was set up against our health, that was set up against a healthy weight, a weight management and drum roll, please good self-image, a good self-image. And so Father, in the name of Jesus, even going back to a childhood where people have struggled with self-image and weight, and it started way back when they were a child and they don't even know when it was a child or what started it, or people in their family were cussing and cursing their weight and calling them names. And then there were things that were happening and, forward, and, and, and covenants being forged. We ask you, dear Jesus, to begin to break these things off of your people. We're asking you, Father, to undo. So you know in the scripture, um, I don't know, maybe it was Exodus. I don't know. Maybe Numbers. It was one of them. Deuteronomy or Numbers. And it talked about a woman, if she made a covenant 
and her husband didn't know. And then when her husband found out about it, he could go to the person that she made the covenant with and he could break the covenant. The Bible says that he is our ishi, I-S-H-I. And that word in Hebrew means husband. And so on the basis and the strength of the word, he can go and he can insert himself and he can erase our name. He can erase our signature from any covenant that we made that we didn't understand the ramifications of that covenant of that covenant. It is not the will of God for you not to feel good. It's not the will of God for you to have candida. It's not the will of God for you to be sluggish. It's not the will of God for you to have diabetes. It's not the will of God for you to die before your time. It's not the will of God for you to be winded when you walk upstairs. It's not the will of God for you to put on your, uh, we're going to pray about it. it I'm going to say it. It's, the, it's not the will of God for you to put on your clothes and hate the way you look because you're always trying to lose five pounds, 10 pounds, 20 pounds. And it's like the weight won't leave and it's almost consuming you. That's not the will of God. That's how we know it's demonic when it begins to consume you, when that's all you see, when that's all you think about, that's demonic. That's demonic, right? And so, yes, we will do the work that we're supposed to do, but we're asking Holy Spirit tonight for help. Come on, guys. We're asking Holy Spirit for help. We're asking Holy Spirit to undo every demonic covenant. We're asking the Holy Spirit to slather our immortal body in the blood of Jesus. We're asking the Holy Spirit to be our rear God. We're asking the Holy Spirit to be our refuge. We're asking the Holy Spirit to hide us. We're asking the Holy Spirit to give us wisdom about new wine and new wineskin. We're asking the Holy Spirit to allow us to love the way that we look, that every poor self-image that is represented on here that goes back to when you were a child. We break that now off of you in the name of Jesus, be made free. Whom the son makes free is free indeed. Hallelujah. Come on, guys. And so Holy Spirit, going into 2020, we welcome you into the area of health. We lay this area down before you. We need new habits in the name and in the blood of Jesus, where there's even addiction and food addiction that has been forged because of evil covenants and now habits. We're asking you, Father, to break the covenants and to break the habits. We're asking you, Father, to turn appetites, to turn the appetites and even the war that is on the food supply of the United States. We're asking you, God, to give us wisdom on what to buy and what not to buy in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We're asking you, God, for help to work out. And so even if you've had dreams where, you know, maybe people were working out or you had dreams where you were sleeping and that means so many things, you know what I mean? But even the places, every place that you are sleeping in your life, that you should be awake and working. But right now we're praying about the area of, of, of being awake and working when it comes to your health when it comes to your help. And so, Father, we receive your help. Holy Spirit, we receive your help. Masokotai, Rukute, we receive your help in the name of Jesus. New habits all around. And, and then, Father, because we can, because we can, because we're so courageous, because we can, we thank you for supernatural weight loss. I believe in supernatural weight loss. I believe it. Yes, I do. I believe in supernatural weight loss. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, where people are fighting against something that is demonic and they didn't even realize. And so it came on supernaturally. Well, then Father, let it fall off just as supernatural in the name and in the blood of Jesus. Don't let any more time be taken, be pillaged, be uh, uh, stolen from your people because they don't, they hate the way they look or they hate this thing or there's shame attached to this. We thank you, Father, that you turn this to favor you and to favor your plan in our life in the name of Jesus. Supernatural weight loss.
Supernatural weight loss, akosoto. Supernatural weight loss, ikosaya. You will not get into your older age and you be frail and you, you know, bones be tripping. You will not. No, you will get in your older age and you will be strong and you will be vibrant. God wants to use you until the day he, he, he transitions you to be eyeball to eyeball with him. God wants to use you. And so, Father, 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 we are asking for help in this area hallelujah in the name of jesus we pray hallelujah amen 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 i pray that made sense listen everything ain't what it looked like right okay so i love you guys we've been on for an hour and a half that's enough of story time and i love you we're going to be on in the morning for prayer at 6 a.m. My Karen, Apostle Karen, is going to be on. So uh, go over your scripture tonight. Have a plan. Know what your fast is. Write it out on paper for the next three days. I am doing type of fast. It's going to look like this. Set your alarms. Go ahead and plan. And the Holy Spirit is going to help you. The Holy, Lean on the Holy Spirit. Lean on the Holy Spirit. Lean on the Holy Spirit. Our, our success is found in the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 So I love you guys. And um, we'll see. I'll see you later on this week. Amen. Amen.